In the sense of, okay, for example, I remember the first piece I was working with him was Berkeley Sonatina. And I had, of course, the fingerings from, uh, from Julian Brim printed there in the... And also my own, that I was looking for this and for that. For that. And there were two particular places where, uh, where I, what I was doing and, and continue doing systematically, I was obliging myself to look for different avenues. Okay, I have fingering number one, fingering number two, fingering number three. Huh? Because looking for fingerings, and this is something that I was, we were doing with Carnevaro, let's say, how many possibilities has each situation? And, you know, to go as far as possible in this. And this is very important because then, then you oblige yourself to open your mind to any possibility and not this one that you think from the very beginning, okay, this is the, the best one, I'm, I'm happy with this, and, and then I don't look for, for anything else. So, the, um, let's say the relation with Calibar with this was, for example, we were working like two hours on this thing, on this passage, and finally we arrived to the conclusion that the fingering from Brim was the best. And this was a very happy moment because we were both happy to realize that there were, we were at least three persons in the world that we were <laughs> happy with the same thing, right? <laughs> the guy that did it. Yeah, you know. I mean, something must be okay there. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> and then with other pieces, we were confronting the, the same kind of situations. Huh? And I, I was studying with Santorsola at the same time. And Sartosola also had an enormous respect for Segovia. He was even composing things for Segovia. And we were all in, a, in, in this kind of, uh, excuse me, excuse me, kind of stupid situation in which people were, uh, let's say, in a kind of rebellion against Segovia and uh, against Tarrega and against, I don't know, against whatever was in the past. And it was completely stupid because we were all there, probably or surely, because these guys were doing what, we, what they were doing. Hmm? Like we are all here because of this. Like you yourself, I mean, I, I remember you play, playing when you were a teenager and we were talking about the same things. 15 hmm? years old. <laughs> 15 years old, yeah. Porto Alegre, 1979. 79, East. Wow, incredible. Long time. Yeah, so. Bravo, let, let me ask you something else then. Um, Something that is very interesting in your playing is that you always use a lot of different colors, a lot of different sounds, dynamics, piano, forte. Like in 10 seconds, we are taken to a different world that's not very common today. How do you think about that when you're learning a piece? And how do you compare that with uh, a lot of the approaches that we see today that are more flat and with less uh, dynamics? Yeah, that's a question. <laughs> The story is that, for me, I think since, since I was, uh, I don't know, two or three years old, I was fascinated with uh, the different colors of the different instruments. I remember I was exactly four years old and I was getting maniac of hearing the serenade quartet from Haydn with my mother. And of course, I loved the second movement and so beautiful. Until today, every time I hear them, very emotional. It was very interesting because in the house we had like two or three different versions. And with my mother, we were passing from one, one version to the other. And it was fascinating to me to, to see the differences and the, the interest of each possibility. By the other side, in a house of my aunt, we had a lot of guitars. My aunt had, I don't know, Fleta, Ramirez Juan, Esteso, uh, you name it. And I was very, very, very small. And all these guitars were enormous for me. I was thinking like, and I was enjoying very much to pass from the Ibáñez to the Ramírez, to the Fleta, to the Esteso, to Núñez, to Muñoz, to this. And of course, each instrument is different. And if you want to, to look for, for the, the best emotion or the best realization of a musical idea, then it's a perfect tool 
to try possibilities. And I think that we interpreters, we should be also composers in the sense of we need to understand what, what the composer aims, what is his, his ultimate, uh, let's say... The goal. The goal and the goals and his nature, because everything, everything is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the goal. I mean, and what, what uh, we are an instrument. Yeah, and the instrument is our instrument, and, and the piece, and the player, and the instrument, and the whole, and everything goes together. Even the public, let's say, we are playing together there. There's one that has the, 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 the work of producing the sound, but we, we are together or we are not. You know, it is, for me, it's a kind of community. So this making colors is a tool, but it's an emotional tool, and it's an aesthetical tool, and also an intelligence tool. Let's say, is a multi-tool in the sense of uh, the multi-dimensional uh, uh, aspect of the music. I, my aim is to, to work in four dimensions, let's say. It's not philosophical, it's, it's practical. And uh, the colors are probably one of the biggest richness of the instrument because we can fabricate the sound directly. I mean, you know, with all the instruments, fabulous instruments that you have, why do you like them? Because of this difference and this mar marvelous world. No? And for example, when, when you play with, uh, with strings, they fabricate also the sound in a different way. But when you play with a pianist, for example, they, they need to struggle in, in other ways to, to approach this kind of thing. So they need to, to work more on the textures and uh, dynamics, etc. But we need to work also on textures, dynamics, etc. But we have the color story and understanding how to manipulate the colors and the strings because in reality we are string players. Yeah, the guitar is just amplifying this. So to manipulate the strings, without this, there's no music. And to play flat, like uh, most of people think that perfection in playing is to play boring. And I, I'm sure that most of the people, they don't want to be boring. But it becomes boring because there's kind of fear of, I don't know, looking for something else than just make sure that all the notes are there. If you are going to make music, you are going to be technically much more advanced. You need to be technically much more advanced because otherwise you cannot govern the musical discourse. So if, and if you don't, 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 don't make a musical discourse that is really a communication tool, then there's no music then stop doing this and do something else. I mean, this is my maybe extremist way, way of thinking, but I think that this is fundamental also.